What's the latest, greatest news on Honda? With the big three of Detroit caught up in a UAW strike, how's Honda doing? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. The answer to that question is pretty straight up. Honda Acura has posted double-digit gains in the third quarter. I'd say they're not doing too bad. That's right, Liz. While the UAW has the big three of Detroit tied up in a strike, the Honda brand has posted huge results in September and the third quarter, despite the fact that they've still been battling supply constraints long after that nonsense was done for other car makers. American Honda Motor Company, which includes Honda and Acura, posted total third quarter sales of 339,143 units, an increase of a whopping 53% over last year's performance. I'd say that's a pretty significant bounce back. Indeed it is. American Honda's Senior Vice President of Auto Sales attributed the results to high demand for both cars and light trucks, as well as hybrid variants of the Honda Accord midsize car and CRV compact crossover. Instead of EVs, just like the strategy Toyota took, Honda has done much more to produce hybrids and it shows great results in their sales. Yes. The Accord and CRV hybrids logged sales of 218,684 through the first nine months of the year, according to the company. Keep in mind that this is just Honda we're speaking of, but with it just being Honda, that amount of hybrids being sold gives total EV sales a run for its money. Last year, we published a story on Toyota's strategy titled, Toyota CEO says U.S. EV electric vehicle goals are impractical. I remember thinking that Toyota CEO had hit the nail on the head, but of course, not everyone did agree. For example, our viewer Mark Maxwell commented on that video saying, Sorry to say it's a safe bet this video will not age well. Toyota is holding on to the last century mindset. It will cost them their number one spot sooner or later. Tesla will likely already be selling 3 million EVs a year by next year, 2023. Mark, I'd recommend you stay out of the betting game. Your safe bet is proving to be way off, and even your sales projection of 3 million Tesla cars in 2023 won't come anywhere close to that. Nowhere close. With a total of 1.3 million through the third quarter, Tesla isn't likely to hit close to 2 million units, let alone 3 million. Meanwhile, Lance Wolfer, Assistant Vice President of Honda National Auto Sales, told Automotive News that half of all Accord and CRV shoppers are opting for the hybrid variants. This is precisely the kind of outcome that Toyota CEO was predicting in the story we covered last fall. For those who are keeping track, in September, Honda and Acura's combined sales of 115,437 were up 45% from September a year earlier, marking seven consecutive months of growth for the automaker. The company did note that despite strong growth in the month and the quarter, some models continue to be affected by supply constraints. We're looking forward to those issues being behind us. Among Honda brands, Honda third quarter sales of 302,250 were up 51% compared with the third quarter of 2022 on high dealer turn rates and consumer demand, especially for core nameplates such as the Civic Compact, Accord, and CRV. Wolfer said the brand is on track to meet its goal of 1.2 million sales for the year. Sales of 110,000 vehicles per month is very reasonable for us to do over the next three months, he said. Honda's brand's September sales of 102,765 were up 44% over the year earlier month. The Civic had the best month of 2023 with sales of 18,696. The HRV subcompact crossover is enjoying improved supply and posted its best month since April 2022. The CRV topped 30,000 sales for the seventh month in a row. In the SUV category, sales of the Pilot midsize crossover took a slide of 20% in September on tighter availability, but Wolfer said Honda expects to make up for the dip in October. He added, there's an opportunity for us to expand our light truck sales because we anticipate improved arrivals in the fourth quarter, and there's a lot of upside for models like Pilot. So that's good news for you Honda lovers out there. Yep. Acura, which is Honda's luxury brand, reached sales of 36,893 in the third quarter, an increase of 69% from the third quarter of 2022. Acura's September sales of 12,672 were up 55% over the same month a year earlier. That's the ninth straight month of gains for the brand. Sales of the Compact Integra topped 24,000 through the first nine months of the year. Sales of the MDX surpassed 4,000 for the 13th consecutive month and the RDX posted its best sales month in two years. Other notable nameplate results, Honda Accord up 51% in September and 74% in Q3, Civic up 99% in September and 104% in Q3, CRV up 56% in September and 59% in Q3, 
Passport up 2.2% in September, but down 9.2% in Q3. Pilot down 20% in September, down 3.3% in Q3. Ridgeline down 1.5% in September and down 3% in Q3. Acura Integra up 81% in September, up 83% in Q3. TLX up 115% in September and 101% up in Q3. MDX up 7.3% in September, up 35% in Q3. RDX up 178% in September and 110% for Q3. That's a lot of improved numbers in the mix. Speaking of mixes in the fleet mix, Wolfer said that across the industry, fleet has been increasing, but that it is not the place Honda has really engaged in. For current inventory levels, about 36,800 Honda brand vehicles were in dealer stock to start October, up from 31,900 at the beginning of September and 18,000 a year earlier. We still see strong demand in the segments where we compete, and there continues to be upside potential, and certainly for Honda because we tend to be outperforming what we're seeing in the rest of the industry. I'm not seeing any downside for Honda at this point, said Lance Wolfer, Assistant Vice President of Honda National Auto Sales. For those who have wondered what impact the UAW strike in Detroit has had on Honda, I'd say that the numbers are showing no impact at all. If anything, there's a benefit to the likes of Honda and also Toyota and Subaru for that matter. And by the way, for those of you out there car shopping right now, we're entering the fourth quarter of the year right now with the odds of a good car deal only improving as the clock ticks off. As always, aim for a month-end deal in any month you're in because managers in any dealership are far less likely to take a lesser deal when it's early in the month. They tend to give pushback to their sales staff saying, we've got some time. Let's see if a more aggressive buyer comes along on that unit before the month ends. Right. What they're hoping for is to find a less capable negotiator to show up and then take advantage of them. Then, when the month is coming to a close, managers are scrambling around the offices or cubicles of the sales staff asking, did you have customers in early in the month on a deal that we turned away? Call and see if we can get them in. I'm telling you right now, friends, that if you ever get a call from a dealer like that, you need to sit down, take a deep breath, and plan out your next steps. The last thing you want to do is rush into the dealership because they want you to be back there as soon as possible. Take a deep breath and then shop the vehicle they called you about far and wide. Print off every advertisement that works in your favor. Take them with you if you go in. Print off the Tide Selling download we have posted on our website to help battle forced add-ons. And then Google Tide Selling yourself so you're entirely up to speed on it. It's time for you to have a very hard-nosed approach to negotiating, definitely not a time to go soft with emotion and excitement. You should also take the time to see or see again one of our all-time top favorite videos, 11 Fake Fees. With so many dealers having a fee disorder, the information on the video is more timely now than the day it was published. Have a pen and paper handy when you watch that video and take some notes. I can promise you that you'll save yourself thousands of dollars by doing that. By the way, anyone wishing to make a donation to show us some love, you can find a link in the description box for our charity that helps children. That's where we'd like to see your support. Give sendgo.com slash Williston Kids First. Help support our mission to help children. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guide team and our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And we just had our first kickoff for Williston Kids First, known as Extreme Machines. It was amazing. A lot of big equipment companies showed up there. So if you have just recently joined the Homework Guide channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.